Hey, what's going on everybody? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use our new bokeh maps in Octane in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So why do you need bokeh maps? Like, what's the deal? So in 3D, your typical bokeh shape is gonna be a circle, which is not gonna look very realistic. Real lenses have imperfections, they have vignetting, they just have some, like some subtleties that a CG lens is just not gonna be able to provide. So we created a set of bokeh map textures that work with HDRI Link in Grayscale Gorilla Plus to really help you bring your renders to life. It's gonna really make it look a lot more optical. So in this video, I'm gonna break down how to get up and running with those maps in Octane. Let's jump in. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. We've got Octane going. We've got a pretty simple scene of some Christmas lights and a cloner. Got a 200 millimeter lens on this camera and the focal point kind of set right to the beginning of these strands of lights. And this is what it looks like when we kick off the live viewer. It's pretty bare bones, but if you throw in some interesting bokeh and throw the whole thing out of focus a little bit, you can get a much more filmic look. So that's, that's pretty wild. So we're going to show you how to get up and running with our bokeh maps here in Grayscale Gorilla Plus. And the first thing we're going to do is jump into this generic kind of camera. And let's just refresh the live viewer here. There we go. And let's grab an Octane camera tag. So let's do that. With the Octane camera tag selected, we want to go to the camera type under Thin Lens and change this to Universal, which is then going to also make our camera mode Thin Lens, so it's a bit confusing, but bear with me. All right, so with that selected, nothing's happening. We don't have any, any depth of field happening yet. That's because, for whatever reason, Octane wants you to change your f-stop before it'll actually show you something here. So even if we just type in the same 2.8 uh, and then we refresh... It doesn't do anything. It isn't until we actually like change the parameter that we actually see some kind of results. So it's a little bit wonky there. All right, so let's change that to 1.5. That looks pretty good. And now we've got just a bunch of like simple spheres. Pretty boring, very CG looking, not at all what we want. We want to load in a custom bokeh map from Grayscale Gorilla Plus. So how do we do that? We jump over to the aperture shape, have our camera tag selected. Under the depth of field parameter here, we're going to grab the camera shape and or aperture shape, sorry, and call it custom, which is then just going to give us an aperture texture input down here. Now we could just hop over to the Grayscale Gorilla Plus library, over to the bokeh tab, and get access to all of our bokeh maps. We have quite a bit of them, actually. Let me look at all. We've got Fresnel ones, we've got lens kind of simulated ones, we've got basics. We could just come over here and literally drag one of these maps onto the aperture texture and instantly it shows up. Or we can do something a little bit more cool, which is to grab an HDRI link tag. If you're not familiar with HDRI link, it's a great way to like link textures that works with HDRIs, gobos, and now bokeh maps. So with that, let's grab our Octane camera tag, jump over to the aperture texture. We're going to drag this up onto our HDRI link tag and it's going to immediately put in a map for us. Let's go ahead and refresh our live viewer because I didn't see it update there. Perfect. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I think I might bring my f-stop down just a little bit so we have a little bit bigger uh, bokeh here. All right, so now let's just render region out our little area right there just so we can see that clean up a little faster. So if we just like click on HDR link tag and then we can kind of bounce around between these different shapes and see which ones we like. Maybe we want to try a pentagon. Maybe we want like a simulated. The simulated are my favorite, by the way. They're kind of like this imperfect lens with a little bit of noise and whatnot, just to kind of make it feel a little bit more organic. And there we go. There's, that's nice. And you might notice there's some chromatic aberration uh, versions of these, but that's not really anything that, um, that Octane's going to be able to use. That's more for, for Redshift. Uh, let's try 14. Oh, that looks pretty good right there. What does 18 look like? Let's try 18. I feel like that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm going to let this clean up a little bit, and then uh, we're going to do one more thing to make this a little bit more filmic. All right, yeah, I'm really liking this. This is looking good. Uh, there's one more thing that I want to do, and that's to kind of emulate a little bit of an anamorphic lens, which is going to stretch the bokeh out vertically a little bit to make it look a little bit more... I don't know, like a, like a film. So let's jump down into our universal tab. We're going to grab our uh, depth of field. We're going to change our aperture aspect ratio to about 1.5. And you're going to notice that they all kind of stretch out like that. And if you've ever seen a movie shot with like amazing lenses, 
uh, you're going to get like this anamorphic vibe. And if you're not sure what anamorphic means, um, I highly recommend uh, Googling that and uh, learning all about it. We just don't have time to do that in this video. But yeah, now we've got a much more filmic vibe there. So yeah, that's looking pretty darn good. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this without any of that stuff on there. So let's just go ahead and do a store render buffer right there. And let's move our AB over here. And we're going to bring this back to like a default state. So something like a circle. And then this was set to one. And we're going to let that converge for a second. It's also much brighter because the bokeh map is going to cut some of that energy down. So I'll probably just jump in here and grab this bulb material and just bring that texture emission down to like 0.004 somewhere in there just to kind of match that intensity a little bit. All right. Cool. So you can see just like how much more realistic this looks. It just feels like it was actually shot with a camera and not this sort of like ultra CG perfect sphere looking image here on the left. It just offers just a little bit more of that realism. It just looks great. So uh, yeah, we're really excited to see what everybody makes with these bokeh maps. And that about does it for this video. So I'll see you in the next one.